In this video, I'm going to be reviewing valence electrons and Lewis dot symbols as these concepts apply to organic chemistry. So let's start by defining valence electrons. These are the electrons that are in an atom's highest energy level. They're also the electrons that are on the outermost surface of an atom. And these are the electrons that are involved when an atom bonds, uh, forms molecules, and that these are also the electrons that are used when an atom undergoes a chemical reaction. So organic chemistry, which is all about bonding, it's all about molecular structure, it's all about reactivity. In organic chemistry, the valence electrons are the most important electrons in the atom. So uh, one of the things that you learned how to do in general chemistry was write electron configurations, which looks something like this. Now, if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't remember how to do that. I don't remember how to write electron configurations. Don't worry. You're not going to spend any time or you're not going to spend very much time reviewing electron configurations in uh, OCHEM. I'm not really going to spend any time on it at all. Just I, I just want to remind you what these symbols represent. So the integers in the electron configuration, these represent the principal quantum numbers, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, etc. And these represent the energy levels that the electrons are occupying. The letters are representing the orbitals, the s orbital, the p orbital, etc. And then the superscripted numbers are representing the the quantity of electrons that are in each one of those orbitals. So this superscript 2 means that we have two electrons in the 2p orbital. This 2 means that we have two electrons in the 2s orbital. So if we're looking at an electron configuration and we want to find the valence electrons, we're looking for the electrons that are in the highest energy level, which is represented by the principal quantum number, n equals 1 or n equals 2 or n equals 3. So what we're going to do is look at the electron configuration configuration, we're going to find the largest n value, the largest energy level, and we're just going to count up the total number of electrons that are in those orbitals that are in the highest energy level. So for carbon, the highest energy level is 2, and there are a total of four electrons in the highest energy level for carbon. So that means that carbon has four valence electrons. And hydrogen, which is kind of an easy example, it only has one electron. That one electron is in the highest energy level. It's in the only energy level. So this is how we would use a, an electron configuration to find valence electrons. Now, you may have, uh, after you went through the process of going through electron configurations, you may have learned a shortcut for finding valence electrons on the periodic table. Uh, as we, we learned in Gen Chem, all of the atoms in any given column on the periodic table have the same number of valence electrons, and they increase in logical order as we go from left to right. So all of the atoms in that first column have one valence valence electron. The atoms in the second column have two valence electrons. And then of course we skip the transition metals because they're wild cards. These ones have three valence electrons and then four and then five and then six and then seven and then eight except for helium only has two. Now in Gen Chem you learned that there were probably a lot of exceptions to this. Like I'd already mentioned, the transition metals are unpredictable. And some of the atoms down here in the bottom part of this main group, they don't necessarily follow the rules either. And then we've got this rule violator here in helium. But don't worry about that. In, in OCHEM, we only focus on a small number of atoms. Uh, we spend a lot of time thinking about hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, occasionally sulfur. I'll put that in there as well. Uh, and the atoms that we study in organic chemistry, they all follow these trends and these uh, pre predictable um, rules. So we don't have to worry about things that violate these rules like these guys down here because we just don't come across these atoms or these elements in organic chemistry. So if we want to know how many valence electrons are in any one of our atoms that we work with, we can just take a look at what column they're in on the periodic table and that's going to tell us how many valence electrons there are. So let's just uh, let's just kind of make a list of our most common elements. We have hydrogen, which has one valence electron because it's in that first column. And then we have carbon. We've already talked about that. It has four valence electrons. What did I do there? And then we do also spend a lot of time talking about uh, nitrogen. And nitrogen in that fifth column has five valence electrons. 
and uh, oxygen and sulfur. I don't spend much time talking about sulfur, um, but some a lot of textbooks include it. Both of those elements in the same column, they both have six valence electrons. And then all of these halogens, and we spend most of the time, if we're thinking about halogens, most of the time we focus on chlorine and bromine, but a little bit fluorine and iodine as well. Um, so let's finish filling this in for valence electrons for carbon. So all of our halogens, I'm just going to say halogens in general, uh, those all have, they're in the seventh column, those all have seven valence electrons. Now I'm going to give you a little, uh, like a little bit of a tip um, in organic chemistry. A lot of times the halogens are kind of interchangeable and we just give them the generic symbol capital X. So that capital X, we just used to mean it could be any one of those halogens. Maybe it's chlorine, maybe it's bromine, maybe it's iodine. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so moving on to Lewis dot symbols. Lewis dot symbols are a way for us to easily represent this information right here, the number of valence electrons in these different atoms. Now, in order for us to draw a Lewis dot symbol, we're going to start by writing the symbol of the element. So that means H for hydrogen or O for oxygen, whatever it might be. I'm just going to write the atomic symbol. And then we're going to surround that atomic symbol with dots that represent the number of valence electrons in that element. So hydrogen having only one valence electron, its Lewis dot symbol is just going to look like that with that single dot. That single dot means that it has one valence electron. And the location of that single dot is totally up to you. You can draw it where I did, or you can draw it up here or over here or down here. Conventionally, when we're drawing the dots on a Lewis dot symbol, we put them in either the 12 o'clock position or three o'clock or six o'clock or nine o'clock. And it's really uh, doesn't make a difference where you draw it. So all of these would be equally correct Lewis dot symbols for hydrogen. Uh, and let's just go ahead and draw the Lewis dot symbol for all of these elements um, that we commonly focus on in organic chemistry. So moving on next to carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons. It's in that fourth column. Now you may remember this when you learned how to draw Lewis dot symbols. We go around the clock, so to speak. So 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. We put one dot in each position before we double any of them up. So for example, with carbon, we wouldn't double any of the dots up or we wouldn't pair any of the electrons up until we had put an electron in each individual position. So for carbon, the Lewis dot symbol looks like this. And uh, moving on next to nitrogen, nitrogen is in the fifth column. So that means it has five valence electrons. So that means we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and we end up with a pair of electrons. And it doesn't matter. Again, it doesn't matter how we choose to represent that. So the location of the paired electrons versus the unpaired electrons doesn't make any difference at all. I got to erase that. It's driving me nuts. And then uh, continue moving on. We've got oxygen and sulfur. They both have six valence electrons, so their Lewis dot symbols are going to look the same. And we're going to put six dots going around the clock like that. That would be one way to represent it. Or sometimes people like to kind of make it symmetrical, looking like that, and that's fine as well. We've got six total electrons. We've got two pairs, and we have two unpaired electrons. And then let's do our halogens. Let's do fluorine. Uh, there are seven valence electrons for a halogen, so that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and that's going to be true for all of the halogens. Just like previous examples, it doesn't matter how we lay it out. Or if we want to be cool, we can use that notation. We use the, the capital X to just represent any halogen. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, we could draw a Lewis dot symbol like that. And again, that X symbol is our way of communicating, hey, maybe that's fluorine, maybe it's bromine, maybe it's iodine. We really don't care which halogen it is. Uh, and so that's our review of valence electrons and Lewis dot symbols. In the next video, we're going to talk about how we can use these Lewis dot symbols to quickly draw Lewis structures for molecules.